Am I wrong for refusing to divorce my husband? I, 30 female, met my husband Dave, 32 male, when we were little. He's been my best friend since we were 10. We were raised in very conservative Christian families in the Bible Belt. He followed the script expected of us, dated in high school, engaged in college, married after his graduation, and kids after I established a career. My kids are 5 and 3. We've been married for 10 years. We separated but stayed legally married 3.5 years ago because I finally admitted to him and myself that I'm a lesbian. Oh, what? Oh, I did not see <laughs> I thought that I could fake it till I make it, but I just couldn't do it anymore. It was strained for a while and we continued couples therapy. Ultimately, we both wanted to do the best for our kids. For us, that meant continuing to live together. He lives in the apartment above our detached garage because neither of us want to be single parents. Eventually, we both started dating other people and I met my girlfriend, Krista, a year and a half ago. She knew that I had kids and an unconventional co-parenting arrangement up front and I told her I was still legally married after six months of dating. She had been fine with our living slash co-parenting parenting style prior to this but was less than thrilled by my lack of official divorce. She asked if divorce was eventful and I told her yes. Dave and I agreed we divorced when it was no longer mutually beneficial to remain married. For example, a new potential spouse. The longer Krista and I were together, the more my being married bothered her. She feels remaining married symbolizes I'm subconsciously clinging to my straight identity and is a barrier to moving on with my life, which I mildly disagree with but understand. She does not want to get married and had voiced the opinion that it was just a piece of paper, so I'm surprised it's become such a big deal. I agreed four months ago that I would bring it up with Dave and set a timeline for divorce by the end of this year to make her happy. Two months ago, Dave's company downsized his job and a week later he found out his increasing fatigue and illness was aggressive leukemia. He's undergoing treatment that is estimated to be 10% effective in cases like his and they told him to consider that this might be terminal. If the treatment fails, they've given him six months to a year. For Krista, this changes nothing. For me, divorcing Dave now would make what is potentially his final months even harder than they have to be. Whether she likes it or not, he's the father of my children and my oldest friend. To force the issue while he's fighting for his life would be incredibly selfish and damaging to both him and our kids. She's telling me that not only am I regressing into denial about my sexuality by refusing to bring it up again, but also that I'm already a selfish asshole by leading her on and that I want the best of both worlds by remaining married to a man while continuing to date a woman. My boyfriend's become really abusive since I told him I was pregnant. In fact, I think he actually tried to unalive me, but I'm not sure. He and I started dating seven months ago. I actually suspect that he's a narcissist, but honestly, I can't be sure. That's why I'm telling my story on here to get some perspective. When we first started dating, he started love bombing me. I actually had to Google what that was because I wasn't sure. But after I did, I can definitely say that he did do that. Just after one week of going on dates, he told me that he loved me. Then basically, he just pressured me into becoming his girlfriend. He even went behind my back to speak to my parents and convince them to say yes to him. He obviously made a good impression on my parents and they convinced me to go out with him. Two months into the relationship, everything was normal. He was really affectionate, loving. He made time for me. He would think of really creative dates. But anytime I didn't say thank you for the smallest thing. For example, if he opened the door for me and I didn't say thank you, he would get upset. Sometimes he'd make breakfast for me and if I didn't say thank you in a very enthusiastic way, he would get really upset. After the third month, he started accusing me of being ungrateful. And then after that, he started getting really jealous. He hadn't done this before, so I thought it was just a phase and that it would pass. But unfortunately, it did not. He started convincing himself that anytime I got a phone call, it was from some guy that I had met. Even going to the gym became a problem. He started asking me if there were any guys at the gym that I liked, or if anybody was approaching me, and God forbid if anybody looked at me on the street. He would somehow blame it on me. It got to the point where I wouldn't even want to go out with him. One day, he decided to take me to this really fancy restaurant. Everything was going really well. He was acting like a normal boyfriend. But as soon as we sat down, I started getting this weird vibe from him. It's like he was absent. He wasn't there. He stopped talking and got really quiet. When I asked him what was wrong, he told me there was a table of two guys that kept staring at me. And that it was obvious that they knew me from somewhere. And that I obviously knew them too. Where did he get this stuff? I turned around to look at the guys and they were middle-aged men who weren't even looking at me. Maybe one of them just happened to look at me when we came in. I ended up having to apologize. A few weeks ago, my period got really weird. So I decided to take a pregnancy test. At first, I told my parents and I told them that I didn't want to tell my boyfriend. My dad told me I was being silly and to just tell him, so I did. And when I did, his reaction was terrible. He told me that the baby probably wasn't his and that I was cheating on him for sure. Then he said that as soon as we could, we were going to get a paternity test. One night, he made me dinner and I got really sick afterward. I started vomiting and I hadn't had any pregnancy symptoms, so I knew something was wrong. Instead of telling my boyfriend, I actually just went straight to my parents' house. They took me to the ER and there they told me that I probably ingested something that wasn't good. Now I'm thinking he might have put something in my food. What should I do? Am I the asshole? I made a bad decision while I was in college and got married at 19. We had a daughter. All was fine and dandy until it came out that my husband had been sleeping with one of my friends from high school, Layla. Obviously, we divorced. My whole family was against the marriage to begin with, but my parents still took me and my daughter in. 
Layla and my ex are now engaged and living together and Layla is pregnant. Recently, my ex messaged me telling me how much he misses my baking and asking for my triple cookie slutty cheesecake bar recipe. Now I make the best slutty cheesecake bars in the world. The bottom layer is made from homemade chocolate chip cookie dough. The middle layer is Oreo sandwich cookies. And the top is a creamy layer of Biscoff cheesecake. All of that is topped with a smooth layer of Biscoff cookie butter. And apparently Layla has been craving them since she got pregnant. I told him no, he could not have the recipe because it's a family recipe and we aren't family anymore. He reminded me that we are still family because we share a daughter and that I'm the one who asked for a divorce. An hour later, Layla called me crying, saying our children will be siblings and that it would mean a lot to her if I would forgive and accept her as family. I've been changing and perfecting this recipe since I was 14 and I only share it with people I really care about like family and close friends. But over the last week, I'm wondering if maybe I'm just being selfish. Should I share my slutty cheesecake bar recipe with them? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on this triple cookie slutty cheesecake bar recipe, give this video to 1,000 likes and 250 shares. I hit a camera in my son's car and what I saw horrified me. So as the title says, I hit a camera in my son's car. Please don't go thinking I'm being an overprotective parent, because I'm not. I simply did what was necessary to ensure his safety. Last month my son, 17 years old, got in a mild car accident due to drunk driving. I was immensely disappointed in him and I made that very clear. As punishment, I decided to put him in lockdown. The set rule was that he couldn't leave the house unless given permission, he wasn't allowed out of my sight, I couldn't risk him drinking again. Anyways, while my son was asleep, I decided to install a camera in his car. One of those cool tiny ones that aren't noticeable unless you search for them. I planted it in an air vent at the top, leaving the vent cracked open. My son isn't the brightest, so he would never think to search his car. He would never suspect a camera. After watching over his actions for the week, I determined he had gotten his act together and could leave the house again. Three weeks had passed and there was no suspicious activity on the car cam so I decided it would be okay to let him drive. I regretted that decision almost instantly. He bolted out of the house and hopped in the car to head to his girlfriend's house without even letting me know. I'm quite annoyed that he didn't ask for permission but I'll let it slide this time since it is her birthday and all. I started to watch the car cam intensely. He had gotten to her house a few minutes ago and he left her birthday present in the car. I knew he would head back to the car with her and I felt sick to my stomach thinking about what they might do. The door unlocked and he stepped into the back seat, with his girlfriend behind him. Happy birthday babe, he spoke. I know this is a big year for you so I got you something extra special. He gave her a kiss then handed her the box. She shook it innocently and snickered. I wonder what's inside she ripped off the wrapping paper only to be met with a blindfold. A blindfold? What the heck was that for? Babe, let me put it on you, I'm gonna take you to a trip somewhere special, it's gonna be a huge surprise he crawled to the front of the car and started driving. I recognized the path he was taking. Back home. I hadn't got his girlfriend anything for her birthday and he very well knew that. Why was he bringing her here? The car crept up the driveway. Okay, babe, are you ready? He put it in park and hopped out, headed straight to the passenger side. He slid the blindfold off his girlfriend, who wore a sickening grin on her face. Take my hand, let's end her together. They locked eye contact and his girlfriend slid a knife out of her pocket. My heart suddenly dropped to my gut. Thump. 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 Sharp knocking. Mama I'm home. And I brought Brookie with me. I don't think I would ever trust anyone again after what I just went through. I've been married for five years and I have two beautiful kids with my husband. We've had a happy marriage, but for some time now, we seem to argue over every little thing. After every argument, it would get very moody. Even when I tried to apologize whether the fault was mine or not, it would take him days before he spoke to me. This was very strange because he was not like this before. My sister and my mom were my best friends. I tried to keep my marital problems a secret for some time, but when I realized my husband was not changing his ways, I decided to talk to my mom and my sister. They told me to be patient with my husband and that there were up and downs in every marriage. I listened to their advice and tried to make it work with my husband, but I was the only one putting in their way. It was as if he had given up on our marriage. I also realized he was always texting secretly and making secret calls. I started suspecting that he might be cheating on me. Every time I asked him about it, he denied it. I knew the password of his phone 
phone and i've gone through all of his messages but there was no evidence of cheating even though i couldn't find any evidence i had a feeling deep within me that he was cheating on me but how was i going to find out the truth tattoo is up I told my mom and my sister that I was suspecting my husband was cheating on me. They asked me if I had any evidence. I didn't, so they both said I might be overthinking things. My mom said she doesn't think my husband will ever cheat on me. And she promised to have a talk with him about the problems we were facing at home. After my husband spoke with my mom, things went back to normal for some time. Everything was good and then the argument started again. I couldn't take it anymore. So I told him I was going to stay with my mom and my sister for some time. I thought a little bit of space between us might make things better. I stayed with my mom and my sister for a month and I went back home. Nothing had changed. My husband was always moody and he argued with me over every little thing. I called my sister in tears one night after I had a very heated argument with my husband. During a conversation with her, she advised me to leave him if he was not making me happy anymore. She told me my peace of mind was more important than anything. And she was right. After our conversation, I started thinking of leaving my husband. A week later, my husband told me he was in love with another woman and that he wanted a divorce. Patrice, uh, I felt betrayed and hurt. I was going through different emotions all at once. I asked him how long he has been seeing the other woman and he said they've been together for five months. He apologized for hurting me and told me it was not his intention to fall in love with the other woman. He was like a stranger to me because this was not the man I married. I packed my things and went to my mom's house with my children. I broke down in tears when I saw my mom and told her everything that had happened. She hugged me and told me everything happened for a reason and that I was going to be fine. She said she was there for me. My sister was at work when I got to my mom's house. I had cried myself to sleep when I heard her voice in my room. She hugged me and told me she was so sorry about what I was going through. She she told me to stop crying and that a better man was waiting for me. During my conversation with her, she said something about my husband that I had not told her. My mom also didn't know about this and she was not that close to my husband for him to tell her. A strange feeling came over me at once. Could my husband be cheating on me with my sister? It was just not possible. My sister would never do that to me, right? Part 4 is a... After my sister left my room, I couldn't stop thinking about my suspicions that my husband was cheating on me with her. I didn't like thinking this way because I really trusted my sister. The only way I could get this thought out of my mind was to find out the woman my husband had fallen in love with. My sister had always kept a diary. So when she left for work the next day, I went to her room to search for it. I found the diary in a box under a bed. The things I read in the diary was enough to give me a heart attack. I had traveled to another state for a month because of my work. My sister had agreed to take care of my kids for me. So she had moved into my home for a month whilst I was away. One thing had led to another and they had slept together in my marital bed. She had told my mom about this after it happened. My mom said she didn't want to hurt me. So she decided to keep it a secret and asked my sister to end things with my husband but she didn't and kept seeing him i felt like a fool for trusting my mom and my sister i've been complaining about my marital problems for months and they both pretended like they didn't know what was going on i packed my things took my kids and left my mom's house my mom tried to defend herself by saying she didn't want to hurt me that was why she kept it a secret she said she didn't know my sister was still seeing my husband they both want me to forgive them but how can i forgive them for such a betrayal my sister said she didn't mean to fall in love with my husband and that she was willing to stop seeing him if i want i'm going through so much pain right now and i don't know what to do my family who i would have gone to with issues like this have betrayed me i really need advice right now i think i'm going mad this follower needs advice babes please drop some below have you guys heard about the 34 year old teacher who fell in love with her 13 year old student mary Kay letterno was a middle school teacher in seattle Vili fualwa had mary Kay as his second grade teacher and then again in the sixth grade in the summer of 1996 when mary Kay was 34 years old she took Vili to an art camp and this is where the relationship began on june 18th of that year police found mary Kay and Vili in the back seat of her car he thought something weird was going on so he made them both come to the police station but nothing happened because Vili's mom trusted mary Kay, and she had no idea what was going on behind closed doors 
Oh, and by the way, Mary Kay was already married to Steve and had four children with him while this whole thing was going on. So Steve eventually finds love letters between Billy and Mary Kay and one of his relatives actually goes to the police and reports the situation. Mary Kay was arrested on March 4th, 1997 and while she waited for her sentencing, she announced that she was pregnant with Billy's child. She gave birth to their daughter on May 29th, 1997. Mary Kay was supposed to serve six and a half years in prison, but she only ended up doing six months. Part of her plea agreement when she was released from prison was that she could not have contact with Billy or any of her five children. Two weeks after her release, Mary Kay was caught hanging out with Billy. And then on February 1998, the judge reinstated the full seven and a half year sentence. And then the craziest thing happens. Mary finds out she's pregnant again with Billy's child, so they have their second daughter while she's in prison. Mary Kay was released in 2004, and by this time, Billy is 21 years old. Billy asked the court to reverse the no contact order with Mary Kay, and on May 20th, 2005, they both got married. Mary Kay and Billy go on to do many interviews, and she insisted that she didn't know this whole thing was a crime. Eventually, Billy divorced Mary Kay in 2019, and right after that, Mary Kay found out she had colon cancer and passed away in 2020. I was so embarrassed at the gym yesterday. I was waiting for someone to come up behind me with two 45 pound plates and smash my head in the middle of them like a symbol. The reason this happened is because I'm trying to make some female friends. So if I see some girls at the gym, I try to strike up a conversation with them in hopes to make a fucking friend or two. So there's these two girls. They're working out across like three or four machines with a couple of their guy friends. And I need to one of the machines. So I'm like, hey, do you guys mind if I work in? They're like, yeah, sure. I'm like, sick. So we start talking. And where's my safe space for conversations? Talking shit about men. So I come in strong. I'm like, yep, I love this gym, but there's no hot guys. I look over at their guy friends. They look like they want to cry. But the girls, they're laughing they're vibing they're like yeah i know everyone's ugly i'm like yeah there's like one hot guy she goes who i'm like oh the one with the neck tat she goes huh. everyone starts laughing i'm like what's funny she's like my man i'm like of course it is of course it is i'll go kill myself don't worry i preference this story time by saying i take 100 percent responsibility for the fact that my kids have smart ass mouths okay but damn if they don't be out here getting me involved in their junk I pick my kids up from school today. As soon as my son get in the truck, he's like, Daddy, we need to talk. All right, what's up? He said, well, we have a small gathering at school tomorrow. What's this we shit? He said, well, me, you, and the principal. Well, I got to go see the principal, little boy. It ain't my fault, Daddy. It ain't my fault. Whose fault is it then, little boy? He's like, let me talk. Oh, hey, whoa, watch your tone. I snatch your ass off. Don't do that. Tell me what happened. He said, well, Daddy, you know me. I'm a helper. So the teacher asked that anybody want to help her. I raised my hand. I went up to the front of the classroom, and she asked me to give her the opposite of this sentence. I said, okay, what was the sentence? He said, children in the dark make mistakes. I said, and what did you say? Mistakes in the dark make children. Why? Why? That's the first. Oh, God. How you explain that? To the... uh, mistakes in the dark make children. Are you? Get out the truck. You walking home. Get out the truck. Dude. 